Welcome to Hope for the Caregiver here on American Family Radio. I'm Peter Rosenberger, so glad that you're with us. Hopeforthecaregiver.com. Hopeforthecaregiver.com. Have you got all your Christmas shopping done, all the meals planned, all the decorations up? (laughs) It's the most wonderful time of the year. Does it stress you out a little bit to deal with Christmas? It can. I mean, it's done it for me over the years, but, but... I've been working on that so that I'm not pushing myself quite as hard as I used to to make sure we have it all perfect. The gift is perfect. That's the whole point of Christmas. And so that's kind of the mentality I'm trying to do as I get caught up in the hustle and bustle of of this time of year. Maybe it's because I'm getting older. I don't know. But I, I look at things a little bit differently now. I think maybe my journey with Gracie and all these years of of hospitals and everything else we've done and maybe that's all shaped the way I look at stuff but I want to I want to paint a picture for you. First off, do you like Christmas decorations? We uh used to when we were kids, we would go out and drive around the neighborhood. I mean, this is back when I was little. Mom and dad would take us all out in the station wagon, we'd go out and see Christmas decorations and then my four brothers and I, my, my little sister was just a baby at the time. But we'd always count how many we could see of the decorations. It was kind of fun just to go out and look at it. I don't know if everybody else did that, but we did it. And it was fun, and and we had a good time. We loved decorating the house. And I still have a Christmas stocking that I made when I was just a kid. I've kept for all these years. And all these trappings of Christmas, and when they come out, it creates a sense of excitement, of festivity, nostalgia, feelings, all kinds of remembering things people in your lives maybe that are not here or Christmas has gone past. I mean, there's all kinds of feelings that come out at Christmas and then it seems like it's over too soon. Out here where we live in Montana, God does a better job of decorating for Christmas than I ever could. I mean, it looks like a winter wonderland out here and we we live in kind of a Courier and Ives picture uh, because the, the, the mountains are covered with snow and you, I get out on the snowmobile and feed horses And they come running through the snow, just galloping, throwing up sprays of snow. And and looking forward to our grandchildren being out here with us. And we'll have all kinds of fun. But I want to talk about the decorations for a bit. When we have decorations up for Christmas, there's a clear indicator of what's happening. I mean, the Christmas decorations are like no other. And we have them all safely preserved. They're in boxes or bins or whatever. And all those kinds of things. But let me let me tell you about some other decorations that I saw one time. Years ago, Gracie was invited to sing for an event with President George W. Bush. And we it was, a, it was an event in Nashville. And we got there, and we, we met the president and so forth. It was very, you know, I mean, you can imagine it's, it's kind of a big deal when you meet a sitting U.S. president. And then we went into the big ballroom. They ushered us there into the ballroom where Gracie was going to sing. And she's standing at the podium. And the podium has the seal of the President of the United States on it. There's a notebook with the seal of the President of the United States. And it's right there in front where his notes are because I saw it. And and she did a kind of a rehearsal sound check or whatever. But it's all there. The, The backdrop, everything that communicated that the President was there. And for that time, for that night, for that day, that particular ballroom at that hotel was the seat of power for the executive branch of the United States of America because the president was there. You could just feel it. It was just electric in the air. A week later, I had an opportunity to go back for a meeting at that same facility, that same hotel. And... For whatever reason, I was kind of curious or whatever, and I just went down to that same ballroom where Gracie had performed just a week prior. We stood there with the President of the United States, and the ballroom was empty. There was nothing there to communicate that at one point that ballroom was one of the most important places in the country because the President was there, in the world, because the President was there. It was completely empty. There was not one trapping 
of office. For the United States of America, the seat of power is wherever the president is. In a like manner, when Queen Elizabeth, for example, now King Charles, was at Balmoral Castle or at Buckingham Palace, a certain flag was raised to let you know that the king was there, the queen was there. The raised flag communicated to all who saw it that the monarch was in residence. The monarch was physically there. Our Christmas decorations kind of reflect that in a way. Because the whole point of Christmas is to recognize the seat of power for the kingdom of God is wherever Christ is. Once a year we celebrate that he came to earth, put on flesh, and became like us. That's what Emmanuel means. God with us. We talked about this on the last program. God with us. Wherever he is, there is the seat of power. The flag is raised. The king is in residence. Now, the difference between God and any other monarch or ruler or elected official, once he establishes his residence, he doesn't leave. When I went back to the Vanderbilt Plaza there in Nashville, and I looked at that ballroom, there was nothing in that empty ballroom. Even the chairs and the tables were stacked away. It was an empty room. There was nothing there to communicate in any way the authority of the United States of America. There was nothing there to communicate the office of the president. There was nothing there. It was an empty room. When Gracie performed at Madison Square Gardens for the president, there was a second time. That room was filled with all kinds of things. I mean, there was a massive audience, and we were on stage with the president. It was massive. But if you go to Madison Square Gardens on any day of the week, it's just an empty hall. It's, I mean, you know, there's a lot of memories there that I'm sure people have, but there's nothing there. I mean, the president's not there. Frank Sinatra, who once played there, he's not there. Nothing is there. It's just an empty facility. And when you're around a lot of the pomp that you get to see and all the stage stuff and the flags and all those kinds of things, it's great. But look at what Isaiah saw in chapter 6. I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. The angels cried, holy. It was so much that Isaiah said, you know, I'm undone. Woe was to me. I mean, I'm a man of unclean lips. Isaiah was stunned. But now listen to what Paul says. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. You're, in, you're filled. You're infused. In, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is in you. That same pomp, that same power, that same seat of power is in you, Christ in me, the hope of glory. That is in you, that is in me. And he never takes the flag down. So when we put up Christmas decorations, do those decorations reflect our theology, our doctrine, that this is not just about Santa Claus. In fact, it's not about Santa Claus at all. And I understand the nostalgia, and I'm not here to have that argument. I'm just simply saying, do you understand that once the flag is raised in your life, the monarch, the king, is in residence, and it signals to everybody around that the king is in residence there. The seat of power for everything is in you, because wherever Christ is, there is the seat of power, and his spirit resides in you. Emmanuel, God with us. And he doesn't take the flag down. He bought you at a great price, Paul said. You were bought at a great price. And he's not taking the flag down. So you can leave your Christmas decorations up all year long. (laughs) Because guess what? The king is in residence in you. What started in a stable became so much more. And this is why we celebrate Christmas. And this is why I have hope as a caregiver. Because as I serve as a caregiver and all the functions go on, the flag's up. The king is in residence. I'm not an empty hotel ballroom. The flag's up. He's not taking it down. This is Peter Rosenberger.